Yeah. This might be the greatest NFL offseason of all time. What is good, YouTube? It's your boy, Dan, the man with the plan, and you know what I'm saying. Hey, man. We got part two of the NFL offseason, y'all. So if y'all don't know already, I did post a part one to this. Video's right here on my channel. Y'all can check that out if y'all want. I could put the link in the description for y'all. And by the way, in that part one, y'all, I'm sorry for the last six minutes of that video. I was going to talk about the NFC South, the one division I wanted to talk about. And my audio messed up, so I'm going to be talking about them today and about the ones that I was talking about in the last bit so y'all can hear my opinions on each one because I did really want to talk about Kirk Cousins. But now as you can see on my screen, bro, this is late night. I was about to go to sleep bro after i showered and then i seen two major moves this night but there's other moves that happened today two days prior that i'm gonna be talking about as well including derrick henry i'm gonna do the same thing like i did my last video i'm gonna go through each and every team and see if there's been any changes made to the organization or there's some teams that have just been losing players left to right, bro, including one you see on this screen. But we're going to get to this video, bro. If y'all enjoy these type of videos, please let me know down in the comments, bro. I love every single one of y'all DDM. We're on the grind of 20K subscribers, man. NFL offseason has been phenomenal so far. And there's still players up in the market as well that have not made any moves. So let me know what y'all favorite team is down in the comments. Let's get to the video, man. Hey, man, real quick before we even get to this video, I just finished recording, but I just wanted to say... I am not an NFL expert. I am an NFL fan. So I don't know too much about players and all that, fam. I'm just an NFL guy who loves watching football. But since we're going off Instagram as well, y'all can go follow my Instagram, Dan the Man 561 Love every single one, y'all. Now let's really get into this video, bro. In my last video, I went from the AFC to the NFC side. But now I'm going to go from, like, divisional. So I'm going to go from, like, the AFC South to the NFC South. AFC East to the NFC East. I'm going to just change it up a little bit. On my last video, y'all, the audio was messed up on it. So I'm going to start with the NFC South side. Obviously, the Atlanta Falcons got Kirk Cousins on a huge deal, though. A four-year, $180 million deal. Now, if you ask me, I think they did overpay, especially for someone that's coming off an Achilles injury. Kirk Cousins was putting up amazing numbers before he got injured this season, but he hasn't proved really anything in the playoffs. I mean, I'm not trying to hate because I really do love watching Kirk Cousins play. I do think Kirk Cousins is going to be a great fit for this team, especially because he's a veteran man, and he's got a lot of young talent around him. It's going to be exciting to see him with Bijan, Kyle Pitts especially, Drake London. And they also did pick up Darnell Mooney, a 3 or $39 million type of deal. I actually do love Donald Mooney as a receiver. I feel like he didn't really get the chance that he deserved in Chicago, especially he's never really had any quarterback help because Justin Fields just couldn't stay healthy. But seeing this pick right here is so fun. You got Bijan, Kyle, and Drake, young talent. All have, have great potential, especially Kyle Pitts at the tight end position. I can't wait to see what he does. And I seen this thing, this little interview, Kirk Cousins saying that he wanted the number eight and that he would write Kyle Pitts a check and Kyle Pitts is like, bro, just give me the ball every game and we got, a, got ourselves this deal. Which I do like to hear, honestly, and, and people from fantasy probably love to hear that as well. Atlanta Falcons defense has always been pretty good. Now, having a quarterback is is the one piece they really needed. And to add Donald Mooney to re the receiving core is nice. And then they got rid of Desmond Ritter. They traded him to the Cardinals and they received Rondell Moore. So they're getting more offensive weapons for Kirk Cousins. Desmond Ritter, man. Sorry, dog. Uh, it, it's, it's hard to see, man. I, I believe this was his second year too, but... They got Kirk Cousins. And they also signed Ray Ray McLeod. Golly, they're getting everyone. Low-key, the Falcons might be nice in Madden, man. I was saying in my last video, is this enough to bring them over on top of the NFC South? And I think it's a no-brainer, yes. I mean, the NFC South was trash last year. Falcons were up there, obviously. I mean, every team was besides the Panthers. But when you get a quarterback like Kirk Cousins, a seasoned vet, um, he's going to be feeding these young talents the ball. And their offense is going to be nasty. The their defense has been good, too, especially with the addition with Jesse Bates. I'm very excited to see this team this year. I might be reacting to a lot of videos, honestly. So now on to the Carolina Panthers. I did talk about Robert Hunt, five-year, $100 million deal. And a lot of people are saying, oh, they did overpay. I'm not really too mad with this for the Panthers, only because you want to overpay your old lineman to protect your future quarterback. And the biggest issue with the Panthers was him having no old line help, bro. Like, every time I see this man snap the ball, the D lineman's like, rah, rah, and they're getting right in front of his face. They did get rid of Brian Burns, um, a great pickup for the New York Giants. They picked up another old lineman, Damian Lewis, four-year, $53 million deal. Not too bad. I don't really know too much about him. Damn, I didn't even know they lost Jeremy Chin. What the heck? 
Is, did he fall off? Y'all might have to let me know about that because I always thought he was a pretty solid safety. So they ended up signing this D tackle. Don't know too much about him. I I, I forgot to say, if I don't really know the players too much, I probably won't really talk about them like that. And I'm not going to be talking about each team for that long. I was just mainly doing the NFC South longer only because I did the last video, but the audio messed up for me. But the biggest thing about the Panthers is that they did sign Deontay Johnson. They actually traded Dante Jackson, but the Panthers definitely did win this trade to me. Dante Jackson, you know, he wasn't that he wasn't that bad, but I feel like he was falling off just a little bit. Uh, but Deontay Johnson, a great receiver when he's healthy. That's the biggest concern about him. He's a phenomenal route runner, as we all know. His hands are kind of iffy, but man, he can get a lot of separation. He's good after the catch, too, but... As long as he can stay healthy, this is what, this is a great pickup for the Panthers. They need a receiver anyways. They only had Adam Thielen last year. I feel like they still need some more weapons, obviously, for Bryce Young. But the main thing for him is to give him some old line help. The New Orleans Saints, I don't really know what they've done. Uh, DeMar Davis with the final of his deal. Yeah, he's going to be retiring, you say, more than likely. Jameson, James Winston, I know, is on the Browns. The Saints get a one-year five mil with Willie Gay. Willie Gay is actually a really good linebacker. So this seems like a pretty good pickup for him. The Saints side, Nathan Peterman. You know what I just realized? Who the hell is the Saints quarterback right now? I low-key forgot that Derek Carr. My bad, y'all. The one thing I did see is that they did sign my Miami Dolphins, Cedric Wilson. I was kind of sad to see him go because I did like him on the team. He could be utilized in a lot of ways too, like trick plays, throwing the ball. Um, he's not too bad of a receiver. Pretty good slot receiver if you ask me. Not like a main op like main weapon on your team. He's a pretty good third or fourth option. Now, obviously, the Buccaneers, they did get Baker Mayfield there. Mike, Mike Evans is staying. They got rid of Carlton Davis, or he got traded. It was the same shit. Levante David re reaches a deal with him one year, 10 mil. Nice. We like it, man. I love Levante David's game. I did see this. Devin White did sign with the Eagles. The Eagles are literally getting everyone. Like, holy shit. Also, the Buccaneers did end up getting Jordan Whitehead. Damn, two year for nine mil. Not bad. Seeing him and Antoine Winfrey together again, that's going to be nice. Hey, man, go follow my Instagram, TikTok, and Twitch. All links in the description. <laughs> now, the Jaguars, we already picked on already. Um, This is the new receiving core we talked about the other day with Gabe Davis, Christian Kirk, and Zay Jones. And they also got Devin Duvernay. They did end up getting Armstead as well. A huge signing for them. I don't really know the details about the deal because I'm not seeing it here, but... I like this for them, man. He's a, he's, a, he's a great... I think he's a tackle or edge rusher. I'm not really too sure. Seeing this news already, not going to really talk about it till we get to the Titans, which is right now, actually. Well, the main thing we saw with the Titans was them signing Mason Rudolph. This guy put a clown nose on top of him. That's that's wild. Biggest thing for them is Calvin Ridley, four-year, 92 million deal. He's getting a bag. Kind of nice to see them get a slight receiving core. They have Calvin Ridley and DeAndre Hopkins. They got Traylon Burks still. And I'm seeing a lot of memes talking about, like, all the wash receivers, Calvin Ridley and DeAndre Hopkins still trying to see if they got it or not. As older as they might be, Calvin Ridley still a stud to me. And D Hopkins, bro, he can still get open. His hands are amazing. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm This going to be fun to watch, too. This little slight receiver duo. Remember, the Titans still got Tony Pollard as well in the backfield. So, this is trying to pursue for a luxurious need. Now, I need him in Miami, baby. Now, if I'm being honest, this is the team right here that I feel like has made, like, most of the big noise in the offseason. We already talked about Jeff Okuda the other day, but y'all, they got Daniil Hunter as well with Joe Mixon in the backfield. Oh my gosh, this is going to be some scary hours, bro. Daniil Hunter and then you got Joe Mixon? To go from Devin Singletary to Joe Mixon is crazy. And the Texans are, are very smart right now, y'all. It's good to see him have two good running backs in the backfield with um Joe Mixon and then you still have Damian Pierce in the backfield. The thing with the Texans that I love to see is like, they kind of doing what the Bengals did. Um, They saw how great their quarterback was after year one. Seeing what he's done, uh, CJ Stroud leading this team to the playoffs and winning the division and then even winning a playoff game. They knew that they had to build around him right away because they know they can be Super Bowl contenders. And get, with how stacked the AFC is getting as well, they're, they're, they're building just to win right now. And they're building for their future because they have young talent in the receiving core. But to get Joe Mixon and then Daniel Hunter... Great moves for them because they could easily still win the division. Houston Texans have always been fun to watch, but y'all know how I feel about CJ Stroud. To see him get more weapons and more help defensively, wow. Daniel Hunter, and then you got the young Will Anderson too. Oh my gosh, man. Texans going to be so far this year. Haven't seen anything with the Colts besides them signing Joe Flacco. Yeah, pretty good backup. You've seen what he did with the Cleveland Browns, especially for someone that they have Anthony Richardson. They did get rid of Gardner Minshew. So Joe Flacco is going to be now in the coach uniform, and I don't see anything else right now. Everyone's really trying to get Legereus Sneed. I mean, I see why. He's had a great year this season. Oh, yeah, I forgot. They took Rick Davis away from us. He's honestly pretty good in the run game, so as long as he stay healthy for y'all, 
I like it for the Colts fans, man. Now we're gonna go from the NFC West to the AFC West. Um, one thing I see is Rashawn Jenkins signing a two-year, twelve million deal. It's crazy because I'm seeing a lot of teams get safeties, and most of the comments I'm seeing is, bro, there's still Justin Simmons out there. What do y'all think Justin Simmons is gonna be going? I can't wait to see where he signs. Honestly, man, I feel like Buffalo is really in need for a corner, so. I think they might try to get him, especially them getting rid of everyone, but we'll be talking about that later. I did see them get rid of Bobby Wagner to the Commanders, but I also seen them get Sam Howe in return. Sam Howe, he put up hella numbers this season, yards-wise. Um, They have Geno Smith, so I guess him as a backup is not going to be bad. Do you think he's going to be fighting for that starting spot against Geno Smith? Y'all let me know. Haven't seen too much. Obviously, Eric Armstead, like I said, is already on the Jaguars. And then I seen this, bro. Justin Simmons. Like, they're, they're really trying to get him. If they get Justin Simmons, y'all, oh, my gosh. Like, these teams are just getting crazy, man. None too much I see with the 49ers. So, I'm going to just move on. Now, we're back to the Arizona Cardinals. They signed DJ Dallas. I mean, nothing too crazy about him. Get an old lineman. Two-year, 30 million deal. Don't really know who this is, but, hey. Get some help for Kyler Murray and Desmond Ritter. <laughs> bro, but, like, why would they agree to this trade? Like, why would they want to get Rondell Moore? For Desmond Ritter, do they feel like this, that, that Ritter can develop as a pretty good quarterback? Cardinal fans, y'all gotta let me know how y'all feel about this signing. And then we obviously seen with Hollywood Brown. The Rams haven't really made too much moves from my last video, it seems like. Um, Darius Williams, okay. And then they this was 23 minutes ago. The Rams are signing safety Carmen Curl to a two-year, 13 million deal. I really don't know who the hell that is, but hey, he might be a good pickup. It seems like um, people are happy in the comments. It's crazy because I said in my last video the Chiefs were just chilling off their Super Bowl win. First of all, they got rid of Willie Gay. I feel like most Chiefs fans might be kind of mad about this, especially because it was only for 5 mil. But y'all, just in, not even too long ago, Hollywood Brown is officially a Kansas City Chiefs. It was a one-year 11 million deal. That's a little bit... A, that's a lot of money for Marquise Brown, I feel like. Only because he does get injured a little bit. But he was with the Cardinals, y'all. And when he was playing with Kyler Murray, I believe his first season there, he was getting so many targets and he was putting up good numbers. But then I think he I got injured or Kyler Murray did. I can't really remember. Chief fans, if I'm y'all, I'm really happy with this signing. Only because, bro, when he was playing with Kyler Murray, when he when Murray was healthy, they were putting up numbers. He was getting heavily targeted and he was, he was going crazy. But now you have him with the best quarterback in the NFL. Next with Rasheed Rice and Travis Kelsey. And I don't think this is going to be the last move the, the Chiefs are going to make at receiver, but to be real with y'all. It's going to be interesting seeing him in the Chiefs uniform. I'm very happy for him just because he's from Broward, Florida. He, you know, he's near my area, South Florida. Shouts to them boys, man. Uh, He's going to be nasty with Mahomes. I know Mahomes is happy as hell right now. He's thinking about a 3 P, y'all. So we got one team in the AFC West that's pretty happy right now. And then we have another team. I, ah, the fans for Chargers, I just want to say, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry, but not sorry. Because, obviously, we seen Austin Eckley get, get up out of there. Then they picked up Gus Edwards. They lost their linebacker, Kenneth Murray, to the Tennessee Titans. Chargers have released Mike Williams for nearly 20 million up in cap space. And now, Mike Williams is a great receiver. Loved his talent. Always watched him ever since coming out of Clemson, bro. He's a great deep threat. He's great one-on-one. -on -one. He puts up numbers. He just cannot stay healthy like that. So I feel like this wasn't even bad for the Chargers. But then when you go up, you see they got rid of Keenan Allen as well. They traded him for a fourth-round pick. All I'm going to say is that the Chargers got fleeced badly, y'all. Uh, badly. Keenan Allen is getting up there in age. But, bro, a man who puts up 1,000 yards every season to get rid of him for a first round pick is damn near disrespectful. And now, if you're Justin Herbert, what are you thinking right now? This team is supposed to build around you. He did, he's a naturally gifted, God-gifted, great quarterback. And then now you're getting rid of all of his weapons. You got rid of Mike Williams. And now you're getting rid of Keenan Allen. I don't know what the Chargers are trying to cook up. But whatever they're trying to cook, they need to start cooking more. Because right now, that shit raw, man. The Chargers got to be getting a receiver. There is no way. Or they're going... They have to be going for a big-time receiver. But there's not really any big-time receivers left out there. Am I right or am I wrong? Obviously, people are wondering about Justin Jefferson because of the whole situation. Hey, man. I'm just saying, if, if Justin Jefferson wants a deal and he wants to leave Minnesota... The Chargers might have enough money to give him a pretty good bag. Chargers fans, y'all gotta let me know how y'all feel right now. Because losing Austin Eckler, Mike Williams, and Keenan Allen in one offseason? Who would have expected this? I did see that they did resign. They restructured Joey Bosa's and Khalil Mack's um, contracts. So, of course, they're both staying. But I know they're still mad as hell, man. Haven't seen too much about the Raiders ever since they got Wilkins and all that. Leave they, yeah, they released Jimmy Garoppolo and haven't really done anything else. Oh, they signed Harrison Bryant? He's not too bad, honestly, in my eyes. 
Ready to have officially released Jimmy Grappler, Hunter Renfro, and damn, Hunter Renfro, ah, uh, he was a stud, man. Loves his route running as always. Seeing this picture once again is crazy, and I read a comment saying every quarterback will be called a little ass boy. Crazy seeing this because Max Crosby and Wilkins going to be talking so much shit to teams. And look, as much as, as a Dolphin fan that I am, to lose Christian Wilkins, it, it saddened me, but I can't wait to see him play on the Raiders, man. I feel like he's just going to fit with them so well, man. I'm excited to see it. I'm happy for y'all Raiders fans for real. Broncos haven't really done too much. Um, I mean, they're just rebuilding at this point, y'all. We know that. Like, come on. they. I think they signed... I don't even know what they've been doing, bro. They got Malcolm Roach. Don't fucking Roach, man. Yeah, I just don't think they've been doing anything. Um, Sorry, Broncos fans. <laughs> Let's ride. Now the Bears, y'all. Oh, my gosh. They are building this offense. I forgot they even signed Gerald Everett. Gerald Everett's honestly a great receiving tight end, bro. But, dog, seeing this right here. Keenan Allen on the freaking Bears. Like I said. The Bears, y'all fleeced the Chargers crazy. And y'all only gave up a fourth round pick for him. Like, for a guy who gets a thousand yards every season, seeing him with DJ Moore lined up on the outside, and you got Gerald Everett as well. Ooh, man. And now seeing this trade in my head, I'm like, yeah. This definitely means that the, the Chicago Bears are going to be drafting Caleb Williams. I know a lot of Bears fans want to see Justin Fields return because they got faith in him. Um, If, I, if I'm going to be real, I think the smartest move, as much as I love Justin Fields, is to keep and draft Caleb Williams just because, you know, Justin Fields has been getting injured a little bit. And I'm not saying, like, no team should give up on Fields. I don't really hope him the best. But I just think it's kind of the best situation for them. Or the Bears could also keep Justin Fields and then draft Marvin Harrison Jr. Oh, Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, and, and Marvin Harrison Jr.? Bro, that's going to be a nasty trio if that happens. But if we're being real, they're not going to let that happen. They're more than likely going to get Caleb Williams. Sad to see with Justin Fields, because, like, I mean, Justin Fields never really had any help offensively. And now they're making all these big moves, and it seems like they're going to get rid of Justin Fields. We've seen so many flashes with Justin Fields. It's not even funny. Like, even this last season, he started to pick it up, that chemistry with DJ Moore, but then he got injured. And then he was just out for so long for, like, the rest of the season, so they couldn't make any noise in that division, but... I just, I, I just feel so bad for Justin Fields because, like, he's not really getting the opportunity because now this offseason, they're getting, they're getting more players, you know? They even signed DeAndre Swift. Bro, imagine Justin Fields and DeAndre Swift in the backfield. I mean, that's nice, but I just want to know what y'all Bears fans are thinking right now. Like, do y'all want Caleb Williams or do you guys want to keep Justin Fields and try to get Marvin Harrison Jr. as well? Because if y'all did that, that would look scary as hell. And at that point, if you do that, there's really no excuse for Justin Fields, but I feel like the Bears are going to try to play it quote-unquote safe. And get Caleb Williams, you know, because seeing his elite talent and seeing his raw highlights, it's insane. To get Caleb Williams, Keenan Allen, and then DJ Moore with DeAndre Swift in the backfield with Gerald Everett too, that's a pretty nice that's a pretty nice offense if you ask me. Now the Packers, I'm not seeing they've done too much, honestly. Um, don't think don't really think they've signed anyone besides re-signing AJ Dillon. I do like this, honestly, to see him paired with Josh Jacobs, but hey man. <laughs> Hey, Loki, this is a fire picture. Now, the Vikings, we already talked about them getting Aaron Jones. Look at this pick. <laughs> That's tough as hell. We've seen them, Daniel Hunter, going to the uh, Houston Texans. And they haven't really made too many moves I've seen, like, besides getting Trent uh, Sher uh, Sherfield. One year, 1.79 mil. I'm not going to lie. Y'all, hey, man, y'all can't be crying about Trent Sherfield. He's not that bad of a receiver, man. Detroit Lions, not really seeing too much. DJ Reader has agreed terms with Lions' two-year deal. Okay. Don't really know too much about bro. Yeah, and now look, I'm seeing a lot of teams pursuing for Legarius Sneed. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I mean, I, I would pursue for him as well, but shit. NFC West haven't really made too much noise. I mean, the NFC North, my bad, besides the Chicago Bears, I, I, as of these last two days, because obviously the Packers have had an amazing offseason. And we see the Steelers get rid of Deontay Johnson, but Steelers fans don't give a fuck right now, bro. Them boys got Patrick Queen on their defense. Look at this linebacker court. CJ Watt and Patrick Queen. And they also got Deshaun Elliott from the Miami Dolphins. And I did like him. So seeing him as, um, y'all get him at safety is cool. But, bro, the Steelers are going to be nasty as hell, bro. Let Russ cook. Pittsburgh, man, let me know how y'all feel right now. I, I, and, and I feel like they're going to get more help on the receiving side offensively. Have you seen too much? This is Deshaun Elliott in the Steelers uniform. That's tough, man. I'm going to miss them on the Miami Dolphins. But, yeah, the Steelers have had a great offseason. Um, Patrick Queen on the Steelers. I feel like this is, like, one of the biggest divisional, like, rival 
signings. I'm only saying that because I feel like most Raven fans freak do not fuck with Patrick Queen anymore. I mean, I know there's Giants fans that don't fuck with Saquon now, but I feel like it's more hatred towards Patrick Queen, bro. The biggest thing, y'all, was the, was was Derrick Henry going to the freaking Ravens, y'all. Holy shit. This is going to be nasty as hell, bro. I made a little TikTok talking about it already, but I feel like this is going to be like the greatest rushing attack we'll see in NFL history with Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry. Oh my gosh, what the hell? I don't think people understand how nasty this run attack is going to be. This team literally had the best running offense in the league last season with Gus Edwards and Keen Mitchell. Bro, now they have Derrick Henry and Keen Mitchell. I know Keen Mitchell is still recovering from his injury, but bro, Henry, Keen Mitchell, and if they somehow keep Dalvin Cook, come on, bro. What? Literally, this team's gonna be so OP and freaking Madden. Could Ravens be trying to acquire Debo Samuel? Bro, if they fucking do that, I don't even know what I would say, to be real. Bro, oh my god, imagine Debo Samuel on this team with the rushing attack, because he could run as well. What the hell? Bro, imagine you see a triple option with Lamar Jackson, Debo Samuel, and Derrick Henry. Bro, that would be so crazy. Ravens fans, I know y'all geeked up right now. I know y'all are mad at losing Patrick Queen. Like, them, I've seen them burning jerseys and shit like that, but... To get Derrick Henry in return this has to be an amazing feeling, bro. Oh my gosh, the, Mount the Ravens for Steelers this upcoming season? Woo -hoo -hoo! It makes me want the NFL to come back right now. Now we got the Bengals, another team getting rid of like everyone. They got rid of um Joe Mixon and then they got Zach Moss. They did end up getting Mike Kosicki. I do like Mike Kosicki. And honestly, with the Bengals offense, I think he's going to fit pretty well. Because playing with the Dolphins, um, he's a really great receiving tight end. He's not a, he's not the best blocking tight end. But he's going to be matched up with Joe Burrow now. So that's going to be very exciting to watch. The Bengals get Sheldon Rankins. Uh, first in QB pressures, fourth in QB hits. Okay. Don't really know too much about him, but that's a good that's a good signing for them. <laughs> I want Justin Jefferson. If Justin Jefferson goes, goes to the fucking Bengals, I would be sick. Bengals still have a pretty good team, y'all. Like they picked up Geno Stone as well. They got they got. It seems like their defense is picking up. Um, that they're getting more defensive players. Bengals still gonna be a nasty team, like I said, as long as Joe Burrow stays healthy. I mean, Joe Burrow is to me a top three quarterback in the league, no question. Now the Cleveland Browns haven't seen too much about them. Obviously, we know about Jerry Judy. Them signing Jameis Winston. Browns are signing. Former Bills RB Naheem Hines. Okay, he's he's pretty productive in the receiving game, I'd say. Browns getting a uh, old lineman, special teams ace. Okay, and the Browns signing Quentin Jefferson. Don't know too much about them. The Browns they haven't really made too much noise in the offseason. Now the Cowboys is one team that have not really made noise in. The <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> Yo, Cowboy fans have to be like one of the funniest people for real, bro. Shout out to all my Cowboy fans. I freaking love y'all. Y'all make me laugh so much. Even though we get in like heated arguments sometimes, it's all love at the end of the day. I, I do love the Cowboys, man. <laughs> y'all funny as fuck. So the one move they really made was get Eric Kendricks. Um, a pretty good fit for them. Did they really need linebacker death though? I'm just asking. He's a good linebacker. I've seen him play in the, uh, the Chargers. The thing is with the Cowboys is that they need a running back. Could Rico Daldo, uh, him as your starting running back, I don't like to see. I don't think he's that bad y'all prefer him to get the majority of carries no i i, he, I feel like he, most running backs in this league every running back needs like another duo bro they no running back in this league is going to be able to carry a whole team only because they're going to end up getting injured bro unless you're christian mccaffrey I, duh but nowadays bro this league needs like a good running back duo like you see the lions have montgomery and they have jameer gibbs you need two running backs that can split carries man because you can't just overload and overwork a running back because it's going to get them injured easily. The Cowboys got to be making a break for a running back. I've seen this. Could they get J.K. Dobbins? Would love to see J.K. Dobbins. Um, it's just, It sucks to see him get injured a lot. Uh, J.K. Dobbins, damn, I just realized, fam. Them getting Derrick Henry, he has to be gone up out of there. Now, the Philadelphia Eagles have just been doing their fucking thing. Now, let me talk about this. C.J. Gardner Johnson's back. <laughs> Bro, this man does not want to be in Philly, y'all. He hates the fucking fans. They literally, they literally stole his car before. I mean, I would have been mad too. But now the Eagles have been looking stupid as the. Wait, they signed Devontae Parker? Well, I mean, he'll be straight healthy, but he's not all that. Main thing was them getting Devin White. One year, 7.5 million deal. Holy shit. The Eagles have been cooking up this offseason, y'all. Philly fans, I know the way y'all ended last season, you know, you guys weren't the happiest at all, but. 
The way y'all have started this offseason has been amazing. So we talked about the Giants last time getting Brian Burns. Um, Obviously a great pickup for them. The, the, the Giants D-line, I already talked about the last video. Nasty as hell. They got Brian Burns, Dexter Lawrence, Kevon Thibodeau on their D-line. They might have the best D-line in the league, bro. If not the best in the league, y'all, they gotta be up there. Come on, let's be real. So Giants fans must be happy with their D-line at least. They did end up signing Drew Locke. Um... Okay, Zion Sanders and McKenzie. I feel like he's a pretty good slot. Giant, they got Jalen Mills. He's not a bad corner, y'all. Last time we talked about them getting Austin Eckler. They did end up signing Marcus Mariota for six million. Um, I don't even know. So wait, the Commanders have Tyrod Taylor and Marcus Mariota as their quarterbacks because Sam Howell just got traded. Um. What the fuck are they doing? I forgot what pick the commanders have in the in the draft, so they're more than likely going to draft a quarterback. If they do, which they 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 probably are, that makes way more sense in my head because I I forgot what draft pick they got. Did end up getting Dante Fowler, Jeremy Chin to a one year deal. That's a nice pickup for them. Biggest thing we seen from them was them getting Bobby Wagner. Pretty good linebacker. He's just up there in age. Now, seeing them get rid of Sam Howell, like I said, he had a great year numbers-wise. Like, he put up, like, a lot of passing yards. I wonder how this is going to work out for Sam Howell. Like, do you, Commander fans, are you guys mad about this? Are you guys, like, happy you guys are going to draft another quarterback? Because Sam Howell was putting up amazing numbers, y'all. He really was, um, passing yards-wise, he was slanging that shit. Pause. I didn't really watch too much of his game, though, to, like, really, like, give a breakdown about him, but... Him going to Seattle, I, I, like I said, I feel like him and Geno Smith might be fighting for a starting spot. Now, the Miami Dolphins, for a team, you know, this is my team, obviously. <laughs> Y'all see in the back, back. For a team that got rid of a lot of people, a lot of people that I didn't want to see get let go, we've made a, we've made some good moves, bro. We got Shaq Barrett one year, I believe it was. I like it, I like it. We got rid of Raekwon Davis. We picked up Jordan Poyer, man. Now, look. Now, look. Jordan Poyer. When we play the Buffalo Bills. I'm going to need you to go crazy. I'm going to need you to go crazy. Because I know Bills fans don't fuck with you right now, bro. So I'm going to need you to go stupid as hell. G, him and Javar Holland in the backside. Stop playing, bro. Got rid of Sean Elliott. But we did end up getting Kendall Fuller today. Two years, 16.5 mil, baby. Love to see this, man. I love it. Let's go. Ramsey, Kendall Fuller. We got we got Javon Holland and Jordan Poirier in the backside. And we still got our, our nickel corner, Kater Kohu. Let's go! We're having a really good offseason, and I love to see it, Dolphins fans. I'm so hyped right now. This is a great freaking pickup. And the only thing we have questions about right now is our interior D-line, I'd say. And maybe some old line help. We got Benito Jones. I heard he was a pretty solid starter for the Detroit Lions. Not really too sure. And then we did get rid of Cedric Wilson. Uh, Tyree Kill was saying we should try to get Michael Thomas. I would love to see Jarvis Landry, to be real with y'all. I feel like the Saints didn't utilize him enough. They really didn't play him, bro. And even though he's a little up there in age, I would love to see him back in Miami as a slot receiver because you have Jalen Waddle and Tyree Kill already on that outside. We could try to bring Michael Thomas in to get another like a big time, like big time threat. Hey man, let's see what we can still do. But uh, so far, as a Dolphins fan, I'm very happy with our offseason to see Christian Wilkins go. The biggest thing to me is the one person I wish we could have kept was just Andrew Van Ginkle. Everyone else, it's like, damn, I kind of understand it. But the players that we've gotten in return. I've been happy with, man. I've been very happy with. The Bills is one team that have not really done anything. We're going to talk about them. Like I said, the Dolphins, we got Jordan Poyer from y'all. <laughs> we got two Buffalo players from y'all, man. They got a linebacker named Nicholas Morrow. Don't know too much. They did end up signing Matt Collins and Curtis Samuel. Now, Matt Collins, I'm not really too sure about. If I'm being real, bro, uh, if I was the Bills, bro, I'd be trying to go for a bigger... A receiver because now they have Curtis Samuel. I don't mind him at all. He's a pretty good slot receiver, and I think he's gonna fit well with Josh Allen. Him and Shakur could be like a low key slept on slot receiver duo. But the Bills, I feel like they gotta be trying to. I don't know how much money they got. Bills fans, y'all could let me know, but I feel like they gotta be trying to make it a play for Justin Simmons or like someone like T Higgins or Mike Williams, man. Now, the New York Jets, what the hell have they done? Um, this guy, they got an old lineman, okay. The Jets and City mostly have agreed to a deal, nice. Al Lazard. Bro, what have the Jets done this offseason? Have they not done anything? Yeah, I, li I literally can't find anything about the Jets, man. So, hey, I'm here for it. Let the Jets be trash. Now, the Patriots, they released Jalen Mills, like I said, to the Giants, I believe it was. They did end up getting Austin Hooper. Not too bad of a tight end, but I don't think they've really made any noise as well. They just signed an offensive tackle. Um, The Patriots' biggest thing to me is them signing a receiver because... 
They're going to be going for a quarterback this upcoming draft. We all know this already. So, I was talking about the Bills getting a receiver, but them signing Curtis Samuel and Matt Collins, I feel like the Patriots is one team that's going to be signing a big-time receiver. Even, either, either if it's T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, like I said, it's a rumor, um, Mike Williams. They got to be getting someone to help their, their rookie quarterback when they draft them. But, hey, this is the end of this video. Like I said, I'm not an NFL expert. I'm just an NFL fan that loves watching football. Biggest trade I've seen so far was Derrick Henry signing with the Ravens. And then low-key Patrick King with the Steelers kind of shocked me. But seeing Keenan Allen on the Bears kind of blew my mind a little bit. But, yeah, we're going to try to keep up with the NFL offseason, especially bigger signings. I probably won't be doing, like, this whole NFL team thing. I just want to do it for, like, the first two days, you know what I'm saying? But when it comes to like bigger signings, I might talk about them more and get more in depth about their offense and what we might see from them from the season. But if y'all really want to see more of this, y'all please let me know down in the comments. I am tired as hell right now. It is currently 1 a.m. in the morning, bruh. But I love every single one of y'all. Y'all guys always show so much love. I love talking about the NFL. Y'all love my NFL videos. So if y'all want to see more stuff like this, please let me know, bruh. Let me know if y'all want me to do breakdowns for teams or something like that. Like, give me some ideas, man. I love every single one of y'all. Y'all be easy, man. Get on my screen, Jet.